Hello and welcome to my final video before I start to continue with the transfers on my ME262. So the plan for this one is sort of going to touch up all the parts I've missed out on or the, just, just basically go over and make it as perfect as I can. Go over all these certain sections like, oof, I'll describe a few vents here and there. Probably won't pick up on this camera, but there's a few vents here and there that I gotta paint in. So uh, to start off with, I'm going to be using some null oil. If you watched my past video on the weathering for this model kit, then uh, I was using this. So uh, the plan is to sort of just go over the model kit like that. So to start off with, I'm just gonna go like this, like I said. Just get a bit on my brush. I'm gonna just get into the section that I need it to be in. Oh. This brush is not liking me, let me get a new brush. Get a smaller, more detail brush. Uh, right. no, no. That looks like a good one. I shall use this one. Right. Now I'm just going to start to... Uh, Adding the sections to the crux and crannies. I like to use this stuff as a cheat, so when you've got like tight cracks and sections like what I'm painting now, if you couldn't get your brush in there to paint it properly, and uh, it's all sort of the same colour as the plastic once was, I like to just put this in there because if it's tucked away, it's still probably going to have a shadow in it, but. I like to do this as a, it's kind of like a cheap man's way of adding shadows and painting on the inside. So I'm just going to do that. And then uh, just, just start from here. This is a lovely kit by the way, totally recommend it. The only awful part about it, and I mean awful part, is this dreadful cockpit. It was a awful quality and I see a problem with me my painting on that, which is good, I was looking at that. But it's dreadful quality. It almost comes misted already. Like a, like already comes like. Oh, let me move you back a little bit. Almost comes awfully. Anyway, so you know when you like put the glue on a cockpit and it accidentally goes over and like, sort of, ruins the cockpit in general. It almost comes like that. It's really horrendous, and I don't like that. So. Uh, I didn't really have the money at the time to order one online. Because uh, I haven't got too much money for model kits at the moment. Just go over this. And then... Go over this section. Basically just securing the quality of the paint on my Looks good to me now for now oh, sorry <laughs> yeah. It's just I use this to uh, wipe my brushes on if you look It's just a lot easier than um, getting a towel and it's warm So it's quite old I've got a new nice red bond over there, but that's nothing to do with modeling so I'm going to shut up about that anyway, um yeah, so let me see if there's any other sections. But this is a lovely kit. Really, really easy. No filler needed at all. Apart from here and there, I suppose. Other than that, no filler needed whatsoever. Lovely kit. Sorry, I was just doing a weird noise. Um, uh, where are my tweezers? Let me get my tweezers. Also, um, useful little tip that I do. Pot noodle pots are brilliant for holding your stuff, so I get as many as I can ask people for them. Just to wash them out and then give them to me. So, uh, I have, I'd say, a large collection of pot noodle pots, as well as other ones kept holding my stuff. But, um, yeah. So, uh, I'm nothing, nowhere near as good as modellers, like plasmo plastic, stuff like that, but for my age, I'd say I'm alright, I suppose. Cockpit looks dreadful, but underneath, 
model looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. All the wheels. Yeah, I'm gonna give the cockpit a few touches up and sort that out, but other than that, let me get my little. I use this, I use my little scissors, my nail like scissors, really, really gently, and then I can remove paint, like excess paint that has hardened on the, uh, on the cockpit. But when I say gently, I mean really gently, because you don't wanna take away at the cockpit itself. Like I said, it's not very good anyway. The last thing I want to be doing is breaking it anymore or making it any worse. Cockpit's not the best on this anyway, so that's about as far as I can go with that. It looks horrendous, but the best I can do. Um, it's probably going to be a short video because there's not, I notice there isn't that much left to do really before I start putting the rest of the transfers on. Um, there we go, there's a bit, about a bit. When I painted the blue on the nose cone, because uh, a lot of German aircraft has really vibrant colours. They are, I find it very contradictory. The fact that they want vibrant colours and then camouflages, I just find it ridiculous. But that was up to uh, Hitler, whoever was in charge. At the time, who was ever in charge of. I suppose it would have been Hitler, but I suppose he didn't decide what was the camouflage or on every single aircraft but whoever did it at the time I think you're a bit contradictory and you probably think about what you're putting on your aircraft like I suppose the Americans said I, I thought the Americans would do that with the P-51 Mustang in there why would you paint it bright silver because you're, you're going to be seen better than anything really aren't you especially when you're uh, Germans went in for bombings, uh, bombing runs on airfields, stuff like that. It's just stupid to have camouflage. Uh, not have camouflage, sorry. <sighs> Making a bit of a tit out of myself, aren't I? Um, but yeah, um, I quite like the camouflage on this. I think it looks really good. Just the... Uh, uh, it's probably the best modelling I've done. I did it on my Fokker, but my Fokker was really quite bad from, from where I built it when I was younger. I'm just sort of waiting for my birthday to come along when I get my uh, Tamiya panel line uh, accent. Other than that, I think we're done, so please like, subscribe, and hope to see you in the transfer video. Thank you. Bye-bye.